Hi, Paddle Drivers. I'm Gonzalo. Today we are here in Rocket Paddle, the biggest paddle club in the UK. I'm the coach of this club, and today we're going to learn how to do the perfect surf. This is one of the videos that my students has asked me for most times recently. Everybody wants to learn how to play the perfect surf. Everybody asks me, Gonzalo, how can I get my surf to the next level? And it makes a lot of sense. Why? Because if you think about it, the surf is the only shot in paddle where we don't have any pressure from the opponents and the surf is the shot that starts the point. So if we are able to get some advantage from the very beginning, it will help us win more games. So in this video, we're going to cover from the fundamentals of the surf for those of you who are starting recently, and we will also cover some advanced tips. So make sure that if you are an advanced player, you stay until the end, because we have a few things that might be of your interest. Stay tuned. Okay, so the first thing that we need to take into account when we are serving is the possible directions. We just have three directions in general. The first one is to the glass. The second one is to the T or the center. And the third one that most of the people forget is to the line of the body of our opponent. From beginners to intermediate players, uh, it's usually really effective to serve to the glass because they struggle a lot with the rebounds. However, if you start getting better and better, it's important that you are able to combine the different directions so that your opponent doesn't get used to your serve if it's all the time the same. Tip for advanced players. If you are an advanced player, it's really important that you remember your previous serves to that player and make sure that if he has some kind of trouble with one of the particular directions, punish him, okay? More importantly, in those points that are really decisive. Thank you. No, uh, you're welcome, you're, you're welcome. Second thing that we need to take into account, and most players forget about this one, is the length of the serve. It's not going to be the same to play a really short serve that is really easy to take a step forward and return it, than if you get it really close to the line. For example, if I'm playing to the body and I'm able to hit my serve there, I don't have any chance to take it in front of me. Also, if I'm going to the glass and I'm able to put it there, I'm forcing the opponent to play off the glass. He will not be able to play before the glass. So those kind of things, you need to take it into account. Last thing, when I'm going to the center, I can play with less length because if I'm able to make the ball bounce there, it's probably going to die if it touches the glass. So those are the length that you have to take into account when playing your serves. And the third tip has to do with effects. We have three different alternatives here. We can play with a slice, we can play flat, or we can play topspin. Um, the most common one, and the one that I recommend the most, is playing with a slice. Why? Because every time that we slice the ball, we're going to make sure that if it touches the glass, it's going to die and get really close to the floor, which is really interesting for us. I would really avoid playing with topspin, which is something that was quite popular in the past. Uh, first, because it's technically quite difficult, and second, because it's the opposite to slice. When the ball touches the glass, it's going to jump, and it's going to make it really easy for the opponent to take it off the glass. And if you are a beginner, uh, and you are not able to play a slice effectively, you can play flat, and it's more than okay, uh, but take into account that it's always better to play with a little bit of a slice, if possible. Another advanced tip, try to vary the power of your serves, especially when you are serving to the line of the body. If you are able to do this, I promise, your opponents will struggle a lot. And why? Good question. Um, the important thing here is that if you serve to the line of the body, they need to move away so that they can play comfortably. If you are able to play fast, this doesn't come that natural. So you will take a lot of advantage from your serve to the body. 
now I'm going to give you a few tips to get the maximum out of your slice when you are serving. So um, it is really important that we bring the racket from high to low. The moment where we are impacting the ball, we need to try to open a little bit the face of the racket around 45 degrees. And the last thing and most important one probably is that don't go downwards, because if you do that, the ball is gonna go a little bit high. Instead, try to make sure that you push till the end, okay? I will say it again, don't go like this. Instead, try to push. So now we're going to do a few examples of this serve so that you can see me into practice. Um, another thing that I didn't mention is important at least personal recommendation, that you start around one meter and a half, two meters away from the center line. Why? Because if you stay really close to the side glass, it will be really hard for you to play to the center. And if you stay really close to the middle, it's not ideal unless you are playing Australian and you have to go into that direction. Finally, remember that you are not allowed to hit above the waist. However, it is really important that you take advantage of the maximum height allowed to hit your serve, because it will be easier for you to save the net. So my recommendation, you can drop the ball from the height of your shoulder, and then from here, all the way forward. All the way to the net. <laughs> now we're going to talk about a different perspective that is often forgotten in paddle the psychological game. And we're going to sit in the bench so that we can analyze uh, this aspect behind the serve. It is really important that most of your first serves, they go in for two reasons. The first one is that you will gain a lot of confidence on your first serve. And the second one is that if you miss the first serve, uh, the opponent gets a feeling of relief and he's going to play more relaxed. So it's really important that you try to have at least or around 80% of your first serves in. I'm glad to see that you wait till the end of the video. As I promised, we had a very advanced tip and it's something that is not usually covered in the how to serve videos, which is the connection between the serve and the first volley. Many people think that the serve is a shot on its own, but this is not true because in professional level or really high level, you won't see many aces, and indeed you won't see any. So it's really important that you are able to automate the serve and then go into the net. So I'm going to do an example. Uh, make sure that when you hit, you are already in a position to move forward. And then ideally you have to always try to take the same amount of steps. You get here, you have to be able to stop and play the volley. So I will do the demo. So I serve, I quickly come here, stop, and play the volley. And that was the paddle drive guide to have a perfect serve. If you like this kind of content, it would really help us that you like this video and you share it with your friend that never gets a good serve. Thank you and see you in the next one. Thank you. No, uh, you're welcome.